My name is Bogi Zapp. When I started to work for the Clancy Institute, I jumped at the opportunity of having access to inside information and presented to you in a documentary project about the emerging field of personalized medicine. This worldwide network of the Clancy Institute provides preventive and regenerative high-end medical services, which became possible within the last decade, but are not yet generally available to the public or even known. I strongly believe that significant breakthroughs in the medical sector can also lead to improved life quality and expectation. Now I present scenes that I collected on behalf of the Clancy Institute for a professional medical and business audience. Some of these scenes may also appear in my own final documentation about the new era of personalized medicine. Welcome to Clancy Institute. My name is Isabella Pridatzap. I'm business development manager for Asia and support our representatives in other parts of the world. I want to give you a short tour. First of all, this is the room of Ushia Martinez del Campo y Ricoy Condesa Plasencia, our chief executive officer. I'm speaking with Aurelio Garcia de Sola y Arriaga of Madrid Network, one of the major investors of Clancy Institute Madrid. My first question is, what is Madrid Network and what are its goals? We are promoting our projects from certain sectors. These could include the biotechnology sector, the logistics sector, the aerospace sector and the healthcare sector, for example. In this case, one of the projects that we are promoting is the Clense Institute with Dr. Clense here in Madrid. It is one of the investments that we are making. What we are are hoping to do is to grow with this project. Our aim is to increase links with the Madrid network an increased participation which is going to allow us to not only make associations that will lead to the growth of the project, but also with the network that we have across the world. What we want to do is to carry out the project with others. We have a network, an international project network. We have Finland, we have Germany, we have Italy and Holland. So other countries are interested in this project and these networks. In this case, we are talking about Europe and we are also talking about the possibility of taking it to the United States to promote it there. My illusion is that this will be popularized and that it will be a medicine for all the world. The medicine of the future applied today, that is to say, medicine preventive. Okay, if you will follow me further, please. I will now show you the room of Professor Michael Clancy. You see our room have, rooms have numbers so that the patients find the rooms more easily. Professor Michael Clancy is Chief Scientific Officer of Clancy Institute. He does the lectures but he is also the creator of the guidelines and the protocols with which our affiliated doctors work. They need these in order to really implement the knowledge that they have learned elsewhere and which has been systematically uh, given to them again in the lectures in order to implement this knowledge to the best of their patients' needs. Well, I'm very grateful that uh, Professor Michael Clance has come all the way to Malaysia to share his valuable experience in this area of preventive and regenerative medicine. In Malaysia, this um, area of specialty is very new and um, is with his great experience now, I have more confidence definitely in giving the best care to my patient, particularly this area. Because uh, what's most exciting is um, he actually had shared how uh, we could use um, genomic medicine and using uh, and identifying the patient's genetic risk 
to prescribe personalized medicine, and that would definitely increase the safety profile of uh, managing the patient. Mm -hmm. So, uh, genetic analysis is a, an important part of your work? I would say um, in, in the future, definitely is an important part in me managing my patient in a much more efficient way. In Madrid, they have allocated 80 million euros for 35 projects, and one of these is this project, is Dr. Clancy's Institute. And in this con context, it is also important to promote the image we have in America. Some of these are related to the healthcare sector, the health or medical sector, biotechnology projects, projects connected with social networks. 35 important projects related to fields such as information, communication and technology, health and well-being, aerospace. They are all projects involving innovation and innovation in technology. Has the cooperation with Kent Institute changed your way of working? Well, it will definitely add value to what I'm doing now. Uh, we do have existing uh, lab uh, investigations, blood tests, but not uh, what um, uh, Professor Martin Clans have introduced us. So this would, some, would be, I say, a breakthrough um, in the area of managing my patient for the future, because it's not just about the tests he's introduced. He actually has done brilliantly uh, over the past few days. It is very important that companies have contact with other companies. The case of the Clancy Institute is one of these projects. In this project, we went as far as to go looking for Dr. Clancy in order to why? Because at the end of the day, he has this knowledge. So there is this person who knows and who can develop this business. On, um, and actually sharing with us how to um, address the various issues of uh, patients' diseases, whether it's metabolic syndrome, or whether it's weight management, in a more defined and organized way and how, um, besides doing the investigation, the right approach in also prescribing um, these, either the micronutrients, the vitamins, the supplements, or the hormones, mm -hmm. as when required, and now we have the option based on the patient's genetic risk mapping. Now, room number two is where the patients will find Professor Jesus Tresqueras, or rather, in, as we say in Spain, Jesus Tresqueras. He is professor at the very big Complutense University in Madrid and president of eCare, a Clancy Institute's scientific body. eCare is European Council of Aging Research and Education. What have you been doing in the last decade? In the last decade, I have been, uh, of course, uh, lecturing here every or nearly every day to the students. But in addition, I am uh, doing research in the area of anti-aging. That means to block the mm. to block or to reduce the process of physiological uh, pathways that uh, lead to the deterioration that is associated with aging. But how do you get from uh, growth hormones to aging processes? The same hormone that is helping children to grow mm. is also or can be used to prevent at least partially the process of aging in adults. So that has been the, the uh, bridge uh, between my former research in the area of neuroendocrinology mm. and the actual research lines in the area of anti-aging. But it's a very powerful topic to reverse something which has already happened. Happened is practically the dream of, of uh, scientists. Not only of scientists, but from every people. Yeah, uh, some <laughs> days of my life I would like to start again. <laughs> 
Right now, there are 12 clusters and four technology parks, which include about 800 businesses, between businesses, universities and technology centers. We believe that in order to enter into what is known as the knowledge society, the knowledge economy, it is important that these elements operate within this framework. The company, local government, universities. Uh, publications, you are very happy that you did them or which you got good feedback on. Uh, How many books did you publish? I have already published 20 books and I am on the verge of publishing the 21st. Nice. So. Which is the most prominent book uh, with the most widespread influence? Perhaps one textbook about physiology oh. that is uh, the textbook in nearly all Spanish medical schools and in nearly all in Mexico, uh, Venezuela, Colombia and Peru and to some extent also in Argentina and Chile. Of people. Yeah. When will something exciting happen? Uh, something exciting is happening nearly every day. Okay. In the area of medicine, uh, nearly every day. Actually, I was invited by the Royal Academy of Medicine in Spain, where I am a member, to deliver a talk about the situation of medicine in 2010. And so I, I had to make a review of the mm. all the new knowledges that you can expect, that you have uh, seen in the last year, for example, and the, the situation is unbelievable. But what uh, is coming is uh, to transform a medicine that is already very uh, important and very uh, is producing a lot of good results, but uh, in which you are normally using one size for everybody to uh, a mass tailored uh, mm -hmm. medicine in which every person should be first investigated in what type mm -hmm. of genetic uh, background uh, they have or whatever before of applying to them uh, mass tailored medicine that is the most important area for the coming years perhaps so it is not um, finding new medicine but to understand the person you're dealing with mm -hmm. exactly and then giving him the right medicine to understand that correctly. yes okay. yes that's uh, uh, it would say uh, if you are treating somebody that is uh, lacking one leg mm. you cannot uh, prescribe two shoes because one is will be used and the other will not be used okay and uh, this is just an example that you need to look for the special circumstances of every person in order to treat him in the best possible way thank you very much room number three you will see that preventive medicine really requires a lot of diagnostics. Room number three is for some uh, parts used for our doctors, but also used by our clinic head, Encarna. This is one of the rooms where we meet, where we also do our lectures for Spanish doctors. Good morning, my name is uh, Professor Michael Klant. I'm the Chief Scientific Officer and Founder of the Clans Institute in Munich and in Madrid. And uh, I'm here to lecture at the University for uh, part of what we call Preventive Regenerative and Anti-Aging Medicine. And we are going to uh, collect the data of the last researches in the scientific world which has been published in this field of medicine. How about healthcare and tourism? Could you tell a little bit more about this? Well, yes, it's true that in Madrid, eight large hospitals have been created in the last five years. They are hospitals that have been promoted in Madrid. They are public hospitals, but they are privately managed so that the companies that have built them 
Well, not the ones that have built them, but rather the companies that are managing the hospitals are a very important focus for attention from the rest of the world. We were at a forum in Washington, a forum on infrastructures, and not only infrastructures for railways, infrastructures for airports, but also healthcare inf infrastructures. In the United States right now, there is that plan that President Obama has for hospitals, for private public management, a plan which was created here in Spain. The model for private public management was created here in Spain, and the United States are showing a lot of interest in it. Professor Aminuddin, you are the organizer of this seminar that has just been taking place here by Clancy Institute in Preventive Medicine and uh, I'm sure you can tell us what your goals are for the university. Yes, uh, thank you, Isabella, and uh, thank you as well. Um, and I must thank you very much for coming here and Professor Clance uh, from the Clance Institute for assisting us in terms of introducing uh, preventive medicine and regenerative medicine uh, to this part of the world. and. Uh, my intent is that hopefully the university can collaborate in many ways in terms of academic research and uh, further expand the knowledge of regenerative medicine and preventive medicine to our fellow doctors and also to introduce this to the students into the university uh, such that the future approach of medical care focus on prevention rather than uh, curative in nature, rather than managing sick people. Uh, mm -hmm. As it is, I feel that the current method of patient care and management is more of managing diseases. And, yes, yes. Uh, and unfortunately, that comes too late in terms of uh, optimizing the true potential of a person. Uh, I would like us to manage them when they are well and optimize yeah. their personal capacities. What you have asked me in relation to the Madrid Medical Center, to be precise, it is benefiting from the entire hospital infrastructure that there is in Madrid and in this public sector. As I said, we have many very important doctors. As you know, we also have private hospitals, completely private. And these have formed an association in Madrid that is known as the Madrid Medical Center. And they have created a project, a project to attract what is known as healthcare, healthcare tourism from other countries. And also I would like, if possible, uh, to open up certain areas of research and collaboration uh, between Tens Institute and the university and with our research center. Uh -huh. So you, as vice dean of this university, uh, very much go in a very modern or very uh, leading edge technology medical direction and bring this to Kuala Lumpur. Is your uh, has your curriculum been changed? Yeah, um, as the deputy dean of the faculty of medicine in uh, UITM, I'm in charge of the industrial linkages, and it is my hope that I can uh, make uh, difficulty to link up with the industries uh, such that the technologies that is available and very current in the industry can be immediately used in terms of patient care and patient management. Uh, and it is so very relevant uh, in terms of uh, preventing, prognosticating the diseases and the illnesses. Mm -hmm. um, I also feel uh, that uh, uh, this area is very new here yes. uh, and yes. uh, there's a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. uh, in, in, uh, for both parties uh, to expand uh, in terms of commercialization, uh, in terms of introducing new parameters for screening program mm -hmm. and at the same time to add data uh, in various research areas uh -huh. uh, and I hope uh, Clans Institute and a prop market plans can uh, oversee and supervise and guide us in this area mm -hmm. uh, uh, such that it can be in in introduced in the current curriculum. Uh -huh. uh, if it is not in the, at the undergraduate level, uh, at the master's program and uh, postdoctorate uh, 
program mm-hmm. uh, for our for our students, uh, yes, undergraduate yes. and postgraduate. But there is interest, uh, definitely, probably on this. Well, personally, well. yes. <laughs> yes. Personally, I mean, I'm seen, very much interested. I've seen all these attendants here. Yeah, so, yes. it is. Uh, it is very. In fact, they're very privileged actually to have prospects. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, someone who has got past experience in yes, yes. many many areas yes. uh, to address them mm-hmm. uh, and to introduce the subject matter to them. Uh, Here is another room, which are, which is used by our doctors. They're all numbered. Room number four. This was. Actually, we're just passing a little display with our cosmetics. Some of these cosmetics contain hormones in um, small doses and uh, these obviously have to be prescribed. They can not just be used. We are looking at an order form of the, which was designed and developed by the Cleanse Institute. It connects the doctor directly to the supplier. In the field of personalized medicine, the needs and requirements uh, for doctors are much higher than usual. Usually one medication or one, um, one drug serves many, many needs and is designed for a majority but not for a single individual with its own strengths and weaknesses and abilities to use the different ingredients and not only uh, take them. And with these order forms were specifically designed to enable the doctor to customize a pill for the patient's needs. There are several order forms such as for creams, syringes and others and also of course the necessary supplements. This is room number six. I'm going to show you where our patients change. Changing means that uh, we don't want people to get undressed and uh, have their clothes over their arm while they walk from room to room. We want the patients to feel comfortable, so they're in here, they're, they come in here, and as you can see, we have clothes in all sizes. And um, they will have uh, these shoes, for instance, and obviously the shoes are disinfected after use, and they will get one of these chic pyjamas in different sizes, and then they will walk around in the pajamas through the clinic. Bueno, tenía algún problema de glucosa y me encontraba bajo de tono y, y vine a ver al doctor y desde que me vio el doctor efectivamente me encontró un, una diabetes suave de tipo 2 y, y un poquito bajo de, de hormonas, de testosterona y bueno, pues desde que sigo su tratamiento me ha ido fenomenal. Room number seven, where we do a lot of the diagnostics that is necessary for preventive medicine. Oh, here are some of the certificates of Professor Clancy. In order to achieve personalized diagnosis, there are very complicated and high-end machinery necessary. This is already, they are already used but there will be even more so in the future. And I'm here with Jose Maria Druil, uh, who will give me a few more examples. Um, whom do you work for? 
I work for Druco, which is a company that we advertise people to um, on devices to clinics and hospitals. Have you got um, private uh, customers or are they doctors or clinics? And The doctors and clinics as well. Okay. Do you provide um, any special services additional to the, to the equipment or? It is very important for equipment to follow up the doctor's knowledge in, in the sense that they have um. to know how to work the devices. So you're more a solution provider applying also the knowledge with the machine. That's right. Okay. What we do is that we provide the device and then we, every three months, we always send in the latest uh, things for the device. I mean, we're teaching them how to use it. We do workshops, we invite them to assist uh -huh. and to know with other colleagues how to work and get the better the better feedback from the device. So you're really involved in the uh, practical appliances? Of yes, it is all together. I mean, it's not just a question of selling the device. You have to help them out on how to, how to use it. This is a scale that measures lots of uh, data. Uh, body composition, not only body weight, but also body composition. And you have to input uh, whether the patient is male or female. This is a bicycle, a special bicycle that we use for uh, gaining data on the uh, bodily functions under stress, under uh, bicycling stress. And it is also used for our computer and software based analytic tools. Um, so we seat the patient here and we have a helper who helps to input the data. Also, we have a bioaging. Bioaging is um, a small software. It was designed by the, by the German, uh, by the German uh, engineer. Um, it's a very important uh, device that gives you all the parameters that you need to know the biological age of a person. For example, uh, you come here and you can have 70 years old, but you're strength enough to pull up a, 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 a muscle machine that will give you that even though you're 70 years old, you are, your strength is like 55 years old. That's important because when you make all the measurements that the machine can give you, you have a very good idea on how do you feel and how to prevent possible diseases in the future. This belongs to the uh, computer-based patient assessment. Uh, for instance, here the, um, the patient can measure the strength of the hand. And then it is input into the software. This is also part of the software equipment. It is attached to the computer and um, the, uh, the patient listens to sounds and always taps a uh, as soon as he hears the sound. So it, is, it also uh, measures uh, reaction time, this um, computer-based software, and you have the patient tap as soon as he sees something on the screen. Um, we may be showing that later again in more detail. This is something that I am particularly fond of. Um, we cooperate with this company and um, what this does is, uh, this looks like what you use for heart rates and for heart functioning measuring. But it doesn't really only do that. Uh, in conjunction with the software that we use, uh, it uh, tells people how well they sleep. Uh, meaning that uh, someone may wake up after nine hours thinking that they have had a wonderful night, but somehow not feeling so really well and wondering why the ni nine hours were not uh, sufficient to be really uh, recuperated from the past week of work. And uh, this may be uh, due to the fact that they haven't slept deeply. And uh, this can really be shown graphically on the screen if the sleep has been deep or not. So you get a graphic display um, uh, telling you why you are not recovered after you have slept for a long time. Now we'll go on and um, find another room. So this is just around the corner. 
here you find our lab. It is very, very small because we only use it to take blood. We only use it to take blood, to store the samples, and um, we have the diagnostics done elsewhere. Um, we have special forms for ordering blood tests. Instead of offering our affiliated doctors a variety of like 2,000 parameters that they can work with, which is also possible, we make life easier for them by just uh, having a custom order form with about uh, two pages of, well, there's an anamnesis on the back, and there are also two pages of analytics that are possible. Some of the analytics on this page are also um, already genetic analytics. Genetics is a very, very important part of our analytics, and the genetic analyses have also been devised by Professor Clancy. So genetic testing is not what people often think. Uh, it will kind of uh, pa uh, paint for them a picture of doom, impending doom. It is not that. Quite on the contrary. Genetics will tell you uh, how you can avoid uh, bad circumstances. You don't have to start with something very expensive. You can, for instance, if you travel a lot, it might be very, very good to, uh, to measure the or to assess how much a person uh, would have a propensity, a genetic propensi propensity to develop thromboses. Uh, so if you enter a plane and you don't know that, it might be fatal quite unnecessarily. And um, there are other things as well that you can, other dangers that you can assess by genetic testing, uh, which you can avoid easily. Ultrasound is a screen when you can see all the inside of your body. For example, if you have a, you probably all know, a babies, when babies comes, you probably always have a photo of your future baby that comes in a nice screen, you see like a black and white things, and that's, that's an echography, that's an ultrasound device. You can use that for many, many, you know, like uh, diseases, let's call it, for uh, vascular disease, for, uh, you know, um, any type of blood, uh, blood speed, any type of that. That is very important. This is our room, our room number eight, where we have the diagnostics for on the body. Uh, as you can see, it's also for, for gynecology. We use the ultrasound. Uh, for the home ab whole abdomen and also uh, to measure the blood flow in the um, arteries. Pueden tener acceso eh, a las actualizaciones, eh, cambios, modificaciones de contenidos, de programas, eh, inclusión o, o desarrollo de nuevos protocolos. This is our computer room. Uh, we have a big, big computer rack with everything inside and it has to stay at the right temperature at all times. This is room number nine, where we have, um, where we do small operations, also uh, cosmetic operations, but also uh, small emergency operations, you know, operations on the little finger, so it can be done here. How has your work as a psychologist, uh, which you've been uh, practicing for the past 16 years, been changed by this uh, cooperation with Clinz Institute? And besides that, um, you have your own lab, and these two factors are, are probably very changed by the cooperation. Or did I understand that right? Yes, indeed. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Isabella, for, for the question. Yes, in, as a uh, practicing psychologist, I, I have uh, realized, um, especially uh, over the past few years and, and since knowing Professor Michael Clancy, that uh, the mind and body are one, and, and hence I, I saw the limitation of just practicing as a psychologist and, and did re research into the role of psychonutritional medicine. And, um, and we have seen in the past few years set, set up a, a lab, the Optimum Wellbeing Laboratories, um, just to uh, provide 
the, the, the latest test for practitioners uh, who would like to add this onto the portfolio and, and we are proud to be able to uh, be working with the Cancer Institute on, on, on this especially. And uh, do you analyze different parameters now or do you use uh, services of Cancer yes. Institute? How do you combine the two? Indeed. Um, we, we are able, uh, as a result of, of this work, um, analyze and measure uh, markers uh, like neurotransmitters, uh, which was not previously available, and, and uh, many more markers uh, in the guts as well as the brain to enable us to, to tailor uh, psychonutritional medicine to, to suit the patients so that uh, their progress uh, are much faster. Yes. Uh, when combined with psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I never realized that the two fields uh, could be combined to benefit the, the lab that much. I mean, that the psychology could benefit so yes. much from lab. Mm. Um, we, are, we are thrilled and very excited with, with this work and, and, and that's why we have set up the, the lab and, and uh, we would like to um, work uh, with the uh, Cancer Institute to, to, to make this uh, new knowledge uh, mm -hmm. and, and facility available to, to more practitioners in, in Malaysia and the region. Can you name an example of uh, one of the new newer parameters that uh, give you well, insights? Uh, yes, not, not only the new neurotransmitters, are, for example, mm -hmm. uh, but, but also the, uh, the genomic uh, measurements and uh, the actual genes. Um, there, there are uh, patients, uh, for example, that, that are susceptible um, to uh, certain um, diets, uh, which would help help them to, to be able to function better, while uh, others uh, might not. Um, so, so when we prescribe uh, psychonutritional medicine or hormones, we, we need to be aware of, of all these uh, modifying factors. So be able to, to do this uh, test and analysis and enable us so much more um, accuracy in, in yes. our health. This is more like hospital beds really. Um, these chairs can be, specialized chairs can be moved around and changed into a bed. We can do blood transfusions. And this is a very, very thrilling room. This is the room of the DEXA scan. Very, very weak radiological imaging. The cytometry, it's a, it's a sort of a bed when you place the patient there and you can measure all the uh, grease, all the bones and how is the general status of his body. That's a very important device. We measure the bone mineral density and uh, all this is computer-based as well. The general opinion of the public is that uh, the bone mineral density should be me measured only in elderly women. This is not really the case. Bone mineral density can also be impaired by medication. Uh, for instance, if you take medication that lowers the acidity of the stomach, um, this can impair the uh, ability of the body to replenish the bones. Hello, Luis Miguel Parra. Hi, how are you? Thank you very much. Uh, you My name is Borghi mm -hmm. and I wanted to ask you a few questions. Okay, what kind well, of a doctor are you? I'm an aesthetic doctor and an anti-aging doctor in Colombia. You flew here to Madrid. We are sitting in Madrid. Yeah. Two, uh, th three days ago? Or? Yeah, I arrived on uh, the Wednesday. What are you going to do with the uh, knowledge you take, a lot, which you had before, mm -hmm. and which you build up now? And mm -hmm. what are you going to do? Uh, well, I have an uh, anti-aging clinic oh. in, my co in, in, my, in my city, in Bogota. It's a new clinic, la, 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 the Cleanse Institute in Madrid. Uh, uh, the, my clinic has three or four months, more or less. Wow. And I want to include and I want to improve my the anti-aging medicine. I think that this is, free, is the first uh, clinic in my country that have the anti the, the anti-aging. Yeah, I think wow. that. Wow. I think that.
So uh, you have your rooms already, and now you're starting to build up this, this procedures and process. And, mm. and uh, when will you have your first client? Uh, uh, we start in middle of January. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I have an, uh, two or three patients in this moment. So one, one m month ago? Yeah, one month ago. So you're hard working, you just started your own <laughs> clinic and now uh, you're learning more and you're going back mm -hmm. and you're directly, not only, um, there were two professors here. Yes, I arrived the Monday and the other day I, I was... And the next time it's practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's practice. Two days later it's yeah. practice. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's hard. But, uh, but I... I I don't think that the hard is for, for me, I, I, I am a workaholic, man. Mm. But the problem is the, the, is the hours change. Yeah. It's, 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 the, it's, the, more, it's the more hard. Yeah. But for me, it's, 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 it's good, it's good. I take uh, two dose of melatonin, like <laughs> yeah. Dr. Clemens says, or well <laughs> for me, well. it's good. <laughs> and, and may I ask a, a, a critical question? Is it difficult to explain for example, there is a patient, and he mm -hmm. comes into your, your clinic, and I'm sure he knows nothing about what you do. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if you have got a bleeding arm, you mm -hmm. know you have to do, go to the doctor because mm -hmm. the arm is broken. Mm -hmm. You say, ah, look at my arm. And you can explain you are ill, look at your arm, we have to repair it. Mm -hmm. But um, to prevent something which hasn't happened yet, mm -hmm. It's a difficult concept to sell. How, how do you explain the value to your patients. Yeah, it's hard. But I think that the people make a change of mind. The thing is that the people want to be good. In China, the patient pay to doctor for staying healthy. <sighs> When the patient was sick, don't pay to the doctor. So in China there was the tradition that you pay a doctor as yeah. long as you are healthy. Yeah. And when you get ill, you don't. If an yeah. if an if an uh, uh, if an a Chinese patient, uh, you're my doctor. Yes. And um, if you still uh, healthy and good, I pay you. No. Nice. But if I want, I gonna I wanna stay sick, I don't pay you ah. because your function, because your labor is maintain me. This is a brilliant metaphor to explain mm, yeah. the patient where the value in health is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but in, in this world, in, in, in these years, the medicine uh, is controlled by the laboratories. Uh, okay. The laboratories mm -hmm. uh, want that the people be sick. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, an, uh, it's an a business. They earn only money if there's medication sold. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I think in, in, the mo in the future, medication changed to the preventive me uh, medicine. But when you return to the, your, your questions, when you talk with an pa unhealthy patient, it's a little hard. Mm. So we finished the tour now. And um, I hope you will come to the clinic yourself and have a look very soon. And then uh, we'll be pleased to see you here. Thank you. Wow, you have good service. I, I think you will be very, I hope you will be very lucky with your clinic. And I'm, I'm sure you will Thank be successful. You. Yeah. Thank you. Anna, excuse me for my English, it's not better. No, yeah, if I speak Spanish, <laughs> believe me, yeah, it's really bad. <laughs> I believe that here in Spain we have a problem, and that is the language barrier. Perhaps one of the most important barriers because ultimately we all need to speak.